Hey, what's up for one? Eric Rasset, the guy with the eye here. Wanted to give you a review today and just personal experience using something that I'm very that I was very excited about and very intrigued about because I've been getting a lot more into street photography and just taking something smaller for fun stuff, not necessarily professional weddings and everything like that and events. But I was I heard a lot about and especially like Eric Kim's a big component of this and a lot of street photographers on a APS-C crop sensor camera that is one of the lightest, slimmest, and most candid things out there, the Ricoh GR2. And I'm gonna tell you why this is so popular and why I was a little intimidated at first using this, but uh, here's my review and just my mindset on who this is camera for, who this camera is for, and you know, just I'll just show you everything about it. So I just wanna blow by the specs and everything really quickly so that way we can get to it. Once again, this, ha this has a 16 megapixel sensor. It is a crop sensor. It's not micro four thirds. It's not a one inch sensor. You're getting a true crop sensor and it's very strong. Um, this is once again great for street photography because you can get a lot of shots. You can shoot raw and JPEG, which is something that I definitely would recommend on this. I'll cover all that in a second. It's got no low pass filter, so you're getting no uh, filter in front. You're getting a little bit of a sharper image. And mainly you care about that for um, video, for moraine and everything like that, but you don't really have to worry about this. It has a 28 millimeter f2.8 lens and that's pretty much anything, so it is fixed. But the cool thing is this does have a few like crop modes. So you're getting 28 millimeters F2, then you could uh, crop it to a 35 millimeter by a press of a button. And then I'd even do a little bit more, but I didn't like it. It does a 47 millimeter crop. So just keep that in mind for stuff like that. It has added Wi-Fi compared to the GR1. So that's like the big difference. Nothing really changed. But the GR2, once again, is only 600 bucks and you can only really find a good one use of the GR1. It does have a little bit of faster autofocusing and that I've used faster ones out there, but for what this does, it's actually very good, but sometimes you don't even wanna do this. It adds wireless flash control, a three inch LCD screen. It's not touch or anything like that, but it is very highly, you can you can see this in uh, daylight and everything like that. I thought it was well built for something like that. It does do four frames per second, so you're not shooting sports with this bad boy or anything like that. So keep that in mind. This is more of a slower camera, but it's act, it works very well for what it is. ISO 100 to 25,600, but that's a vanity number. Anything over 1600, and especially in the shadows, gets grainy and noisy very quickly, however you wanna talk about it. HD video, this is not what you're buying it for. Do not buy it if you want any kind of video. It does do full HD at 30 frames per second, but I'll even run that little bit right here. It just doesn't look good, so I'm not really gonna cover that much. It just, you don't buy it for that. And once again, for 600 bucks, it's actually really, really good. The other thing is macro mode. It actually does have a macro mode. You have to hit the macro button on the back here, it's the flower button like you see on any kind of point and shoot, and that's how you do it. So you can get up real close and that's your macro mode. You'll see some photos of that uh, in, in general. But because this is more of a street photographer's camera, you more or less want to ride the ISO, which once again, I'll cover that as well. ND filter is in the camera that is absolutely amazing. You could set it manually or you could have it on auto. You can have up to four stops or under four stops of your exposure compensation. That's also great if you're shooting just JPEGs, you can see what you're getting on there because as you shoot raw, it really doesn't matter. I always found myself um, having to overexpose a little bit by about a stop, if not just a touch under. So keep that in mind if you're using a camera like this, but I really only use this in two modes. I pretty much just use this in here. I'll even show you here. So one of the two modes I use is snap mode, which you set a predetermined distance of one meter, 1.5, two millimeters, et cetera. And you have to be in um, more of an automatic setting. That way it's just predetermined. You can kind of just like click up real quick and click. You're not waiting to have to, you know, focus it and everything like that. So that's a very strong option for this camera. Being able to predetermine where it is. Now, the best term is like one meter is probably about an arm left arm length away, so something like that, 1.5. So if I'm taking a photo of this camera right now, or what you're watching me, that's probably be the best option. Two meters, five meters, and then there's infinity. I always like to shoot around 1.5, so that way you're kind of walking, click and go down, and you're good from there. The other thing I use is um, basically spot AF, and it's just where the um, where your spot is right here. You click and hold it in. You could go from there. There's a switch that you could use continuous autofocusing, there is a lot of options on this camera, but even though it looks super intimidating at first, it's absolutely not. The menu options are so simple and so unique. There's only three uh, basically menu options and you just go down and you choose everything that you need from there. 
The other cool part about this camera is the functionality and customi customizability of it. I made that word up. And you could take any really one of the buttons here, the function buttons here, function button on the back, this adjustable ISO thing clicks in, and you have five spots there where you can set settings that are quick and easy to access. So for street photography or quick shooting or just anything out you want candids, that is a big deal and I found them being super helpful switching either ISO or going in between the modes that I wanted and if I wanted a certain type of crop and everything, so you're getting a lot out of this camera for once again, not much money. Through the battery door, it does take only one SD card, which is fine for something like this. And in regards to the battery life, it actually lasted a long time. I was outside for a few hours and it actually really only drained maybe one bar out of the three, what does it show? One or three? It has a very quick startup time. It does three bars. Um, so I was at two thirds of a bar and that was after hours of shooting. And once again, it, it worked out very well. It kind of uses batteries that look like this. So obviously I got a genuine one when I got in here, but I have a couple from Watson that work out very well. This was like $12 from B&H. So if you want any more info on that and to buy it or anything, I'll link stuff down below. But the GR2 I think is absolutely perfect for something like this. It even has a built-in flash. As you see, it's kind of cute right there, but it I wouldn't use something like that. The cool part is this could be used for something universal Let's get here, I'll show you. But here it is right here. I have the Rico GR2 with the Yangnuo 560 Mark IV. Can you see this flash? Oh, you did, you can. So once again, this is pretty much a universal one, like kind of like Sony's, but you could just use that to trigger anything off here, so. So just a quick example of something like that. If you really wanted to flash, you can get something smaller, you can use something on here, but it's a little extreme for something like this. You know, I kind of ran through a lot of that quickly, but uh, more notes will be down below and sections on when to look for things. But really just some tips with this. Um, I found that shooting people on the streets or photographing people on the streets was definitely easier using the snap zone or snap mode or snap focus. That way you have something predetermined, you could easily pop it up and get used to it. But that's one of the biggest things and I still have to do that. You still have to get used to what's going on here. But once again, using the camera is very easy. It's very ergonomic, easy to get through settings and change using the click in adjustable ISO dial and the shutter up front if you want to use shutter ISO to this dial up front. It's something great and easy to do. If you want to do other things, I definitely use the other pinpoint, I use the other focus mode where it's just normal. You just snap and you can go from there. Uh, you know, focus, compose and everything. And I found that useful for pretty much everything else. But even at times I felt that bringing it up and trying to autofocus really quickly, it actually worked rather well, despite it having faster, but not as really fast uh, autofocus as a lot of people claim. But this is a street photographer's dream. I, I really do recommend that. And I think one of the biggest advices I got from Eric Kim, uh, his video and his writings on this camera is to make sure that you do shoot raw and JPEG because some JPEGs coming out of this camera will be actually a little bit flat as you think, as you don't think it would be, but especially in the shadow areas and everything, some JPEGs actually do look very good. So some of the options and photos you've probably seen throughout this thing, um, I've shown you a JPEG comparison to pretty much what a RAW was at a camera. Of course, I had to make it a JPEG to put into this video, but you'll you'll see that there was a difference. But I actually started using a lot of the RAW photos, which are DNGs in this camera, so they work natively with Adobe products. The customizing of them was very, very easy. Once again, the ISO, as I was floating between 800, 400, and 1600, as I was getting the 1600, I was starting to notice that noise, and that's what you're just gonna get. But the black and white conversions, as long as you know how to edit black and white photos, I was purely blown away by any, you know everything that I caught. For what this covered and what I was able to do with this, I this I know why a lot of street photographers want to carry this around for what it is. Now I know that people said that there's a a dust sensor issue on some things like this, but I heard if you just really take care of it, it doesn't matter. But if you open the glass here and you keep that clean, it helps out a lot but the response time of in and out is just, is just great. I know that was kind of a quick rundown of the Rico GR2, but I, once again, I'm very excited. I highly endorse it. I texted some friends after that. I know some people were looking forward to this review, but if you are a street photographer and you wanna have something that is gonna work well and you could just spend a couple hours with it outside and you get used to it, I highly recommend the Ricoh GR2. Phenomenal camera, probably one of the best street photography cameras out there. I know a couple Fujis are, are in line after that, like the X100 line or something like that, but I've used all that and that has by far been my favorite. I do wish it was maybe a little bit wider, like maybe a 24 millimeter lens, but we could go from there and you can argue that till, till that gets in. But 
I've even found when I was photographing people, I was at 35 millimeters just to be a closer and just to get something a little more accurate. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully I was able to inform you about this camera. Any questions or comments, please let me know down below. But the Regard GR2, whoa.